I think we can all agree that we're online a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do today for you guys, I'm going to take a look at everything I'm seeing on Twitter, take a look at everything you're seeing on Twitter, and we're going to talk about is this an overreaction or is this a fair way to feel? Because it was a bad loss yesterday, but unfortunately, or I guess fortunately, we got another game coming up on Sunday. Welcome into Ravens Rundown. I'm your host, Joey Peterson. Thanks so much for joining us. And I know the game was not what we wanted it to be yesterday, but I guarantee you, if you're watching Ravens Rundown, hanging out with me live, you had a lot of fun watching it, even though it was a loss. I'll be live for every single game this season, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Join me in my 30,000 best friends. It's a blast. You're not going to miss it. On to overreaction number one. And this is the one I know you guys tuned in for. I know it. Fire John Harbaugh. That is that is the biggest consensus. That's the biggest. That's the, I, I guess, where the public is most in agreement over the last 24 hours is okay. John Harbaugh needs to be out here, and guys, I don't think it's an overreaction. Now, if I'm coming at you and I'm, I'm talking to you face to face and I'm gonna tell you, do I think it's gonna happen or not? I would say no. Would I put money on it happening? No, I would not. But it seems to be a trend. Okay, and it's it's not like this is the first time something like this has happened. It's not like it's the second or third. Guys, this seems to be happening a lot. And I know you know it because you watch all these games. NFL and CBS had this tweet. Most losses with a seven-plus point lead in the fourth quarter over the last four seasons. Four seasons. Ravens got ten of them. Next, Bears with six, Colts with five, Seahawks five, Titans five. If you're on a list with the Bears, Colts, and Titans, like, those are not three names you want to be associated with. I can promise you that. And it's not just the fact that we're not closing games, right? It's the fact that you're not even really scoring at the end of games. You're not really even, like, doing anything in the fourth quarter. Since the start of last season. Last season's 13-4 and four season, okay? Mind you, it's not like this team was 2-15. First quarter, outscoring opponents by 62 points. Second quarter, outscoring them by 80. Third quarter, outscoring them by 52. Fourth quarter, Ravens are getting outscored by four points. You saw it in the first game against the Chiefs. You saw it yesterday against the Raiders. Not only are they not finding ways to win games, but like yesterday, it seems like they're actively finding ways to lose them. And I think that's my biggest stick with John Harbaugh. And that's my biggest shtick with the whole coaching staff is it seems like there's kind of a common denominator over the last four seasons. So what do you guys think? Should the Ravens fire John Harbaugh? Is it time for them to part ways? I think it might be. You guys let me know in the comment section. Type Y for yes and type in for no. Overreaction number two, Derrick Henry is washed. The king is washed, everybody. I think this is an overreaction. I really do. I know that he hasn't been there on the stat sheet if you look at the last two games. I know it hasn't been anything incredible. He's only broken off a couple of long runs. And, and since uh, with the Chiefs and the Raiders games, 31 carries, 130 yards, 4.2 yards per carry with two touchdowns, which, which that's, that's a nice addition to that. But, guys, 4.2 yards per carry isn't bad. 130 yards over two games. I know it's not what we're used to seeing Derrick Henry get in his career. But I think there's two reasons as to why he's struggling. I think, number one, it's the offensive scheme. And I know Todd Munkin looks happy up there, but I don't think he should be. Because it seems pretty obvious. It goes almost back to, like, third grade football, it seems like. When Derrick Henry's on the field, it's pretty obvious it's going to be a run. And when Justice Hill is on the field, there's like a 70% chance you're going to pass the football. And so it's like, it, it's confusing to me why this offensive coaching staff is continuing to do this. Why there's no mix-ups. Why, it, why Justice Hill is out snapping, is getting more snaps than Derrick Henry over the past two games, each of them. And it just seems like it's, a, it's an easy fix. It seems like it's something that you literally learn when you're playing football, when you're 10 years old. Hey, if number 14 is on the field, he's their best player, 
He's their running back. They're going to run the football. That's just that. Okay? And, and so it's like, what, what I'm wondering is, is can, can Todd Munkin, like, why isn't he figuring this out? We're going to see on Dallas on Sunday. Can he figure it out? And then you got to look at the offensive line, too. They, I, I know that the offensive line has is, is been such a big gripe, and it's been such a target of focus over the last couple months, and it should be. The rotations confuse me. Why are we rotating in at right tackle? That seems like it's messing up the flow of things. It seems it's obvious it was a huge mistake to let guys like Morgan Moses and Kevin Zietler walk in the offseason. I think this team thought they could maybe just go in there, throw whoever they wanted to, and, and it would all be okay. And, and I don't know if that's the case. It seems like Derrick Henry is being hit at the line of scrimmage or a yard after the line of scrimmage every single time that he touches the football. And I think that needs to change. I don't know how it can change. I would love to give Ben Cleveland a shot against Dallas. I would love to change things up just a little bit. But at this point, it's like, okay, these are the offensive linemen you're going with. It seems like there's almost an offensive lineman shortage in the NFL because it seems like every team wants to trade for an offensive lineman. If you watch that Sunday night game, Lord knows the Bears need offensive line help. So many people do. And so I think you look to two reasons. I don't think Henry's washed. I think the offensive scheme has not been helping him so far. I think it's been obvious when he's in the game he's going to get the ball. And the offensive line has been getting shoved around, especially when it comes to pass run blocking. They were a lot better in pass blocking yesterday. Now before we go in to the next two overreactions, I have to give a shout out to today's sponsor, and that is Game Time. Game Time is the place to go for the best seats at the lowest prices guaranteed. If you are so excited that the football season's finally here, I promise you, you're going to want to give game time a shot. It's the only place I go when I'm trying to get tickets to any NFL or college game. It has a new feature called Game Time Picks. It makes getting tickets to your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats. You don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. The tool highlights the best deals, including great and amazing deals, which are the highest value seats at the time. For some events, Game Time Picks also identifies a super deal, which is the best seat value in the venue. I know the home opener wasn't everything we thought it was going to be yesterday. But that's okay, because they'll be back at home just in a couple weeks. And if you want to see them take on the Buffalo Bills in, uh, in the bank, you're going to need to use game time to get your tickets. It's the only place I go. I love how you can see all the prices listed. I love when you choose to a ticket, you can see the views from your seat. Gosh, game time is the only app on my phone. I'll never use any other ticketing service as long as I live. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account or redeem code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. Let's head into overreaction number three. And that is the pass defense is a problem. And I'm not picking on Marlon Humphrey by choosing his picture. We'll get into him in just a little bit. It's a problem for everybody, and that's why I don't think this is an overreaction, okay? Because this pass defense seems to be a problem. Lord knows after yesterday, the run defense isn't. Heck, after these first two games, the run defense isn't. Look at this tweet from Jonas Schaefer. After week two, with tonight still pending, the Ravens have the NFL's best run defense and worst pass defense. 49 and a half rushing yards per game allowed. First in the NFL. 2.7 yards per carry allowed. First in the NFL. And then 257 yards per game. 32nd. 8.6 yards per attempt. 30th. Yards per attempt is at 8.6. And I, I gave us the excuse yesterday. I said, okay, game one, you're playing Patrick Mahomes, who at the end of his career, there's a chance he goes down as the greatest quarterback ever. But game two, you're going up against Gardner Minshew. And he wasn't just dinking and dunking, guys. He, he wasn't. I know a lot of times that's his game, but if you look at the pass chart right here, guys, he was pushing the ball downfield. He had, what is that, like nine completions past the 10-yard marker? It just seemed to me, and, and I don't know if y'all felt this way yesterday, it seemed like the Ravens were in zone far too often. And it seemed like guys like Brock Bowers, Jacoby Myers, Devontae Adams were just sitting in zone. And I know people are hearing this and being like, oh, but pass, 
interference against Brandon Stevens wasn't. Well, guys, we're not talking about that right now, right? I agree it wasn't a pass interference, but Gardner Minshew lit you up for almost 300 yards. 78% completion percentage for Gardner Minshew. Pass defense needs to be looked at. I don't know if you start with the uh, pass rush, even though that wasn't the problem yesterday. I don't know if you play less zone. I don't know what you do. I think it's going to help when Nate Wiggins gets back in the lineup, but I think Zach Gore's got to do something about this pass defense. What do you guys think is the Ravens' biggest weakness? Do you think it's the pass defense? Because after two games, that might be it. You guys let me know in the comment section down below. The last overreaction of the day, number four, the season is over. I saw this in the comment section. I saw this on Twitter. I saw people, Ravens are going 0-17, blah, blah, blah. Guys, this is an overreaction. The season's not over. And do you know why? Because that guy right there. And I know I've been harsh on Lamar. Yesterday I was. A week ago I was. And there's areas I need to see improvement in. Uh, there's areas I need to see improvement from in him. I think that's the way. I think that's the way it's supposed to be said. Whatever. He's got to get a little bit better. But the fact that you have him on your team, and you have what I believe is still one of the best rosters in football, guys. I know you might be listening and are like, what are you talking about? We're 0-2. Guys, I still think this is a top six, top five roster in the NFL. It's just going to take a little while for this thing to gel together. But once Lamar starts stepping up, and once he stops trying to be Superman, and is just okay with being Clark Kent, sometimes you just need a guy who can make the throws. Okay? And I'm not saying he didn't do that yesterday, but I need to see him to do it on a little bit more of a consistent basis. But when you look at these next three games, it doesn't get any easier. You got Dallas on the road. They just got embarrassed by the Saints, so I think that's a little bit of a good sign. You got Buffalo at home. They've yet to really play anybody I believe has that much of a pulse. And then you got Cincinnati, who after that first game against the Patriots, you're like, okay, Cincinnati might suck. Then they played the Chiefs pretty tight yesterday in Arrowhead. And so it doesn't get any easier. But then it does after this. We've all talked about the last 14 games or 12 games of the schedule. How it gets much and much or much easier town. And so you can make up some headway. Now you don't want to start the season 0 and 5. You want to win two of these next three games. That's why you hate to lose to Las Vegas, because in the first five you thought Las Vegas was definitely going to be a win. So you're going to need to play some good football over the next three weeks. But at the end of the day, guys, I know it, and you deep down know it. The season's not over. They play 17 games for a reason. It is never decided by week two, unless you're the New York Giants. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. I'm Joey Peterson, and it's, uh, it's Monday. It's going to be a long week. We're going to be uh, a little hangover from that loss yesterday, but that's okay. I'll be back again tomorrow with a video, and as always, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button.